His words belong to the ages, possessing a power and prophecy unmatched in our time. But we would do well to recall that day itself also belonged to those ordinary people whose names never appeared in the history books, never got on TV. Many had gone to segregated schools and sat at segregated lunch counters. They lived in towns where they couldn't vote, in cities where their votes didn't matter. They were couples in love who couldn't marry, soldiers who fought for freedom abroad that they found denied to them at home. They had seen loved ones beaten and children fire-hosed, and they had every reason to lash out in anger or resign themselves to a bitter fate. And yet, they chose a different path. In the face of hatred, they prayed for their tormentors. In the face of violence, they stood up and sat in with the moral force of nonviolence. Willingly, they went to jail to protest unjust laws, their cells swelling with the sound of freedom songs. A lifetime of indignities had taught them that no man can take away the dignity and grace that God grants us. They had learned through hard experience what Frederick Douglass once taught, that freedom is not given, it must be won through struggle and discipline, persistence and faith. That was the spirit they brought here that day. That was the spirit young people like John Lewis brought to that day. That was the spirit that they carried with them like a torch back to their cities and their neighborhoods. That steady flame of conscience and courage that would sustain them through the campaigns to come, through boycotts and voter registration drives and smaller marches far from the spotlight, through the loss of four little girls in Birmingham, the carnage of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, in the agony of Dallas, in California, and Memphis, through setbacks and heartbreaks and gnawing doubt, that flame of justice flickered. It never died. And because they kept marching, America changed. Because they marched, the civil rights law was passed. Because they marched, a voting rights law was signed. Because they marched, doors of opportunity and education swung open so their daughters and sons could finally imagine a life for themselves beyond washing somebody else's laundry or shining somebody else's shoes. Because they marched, city councils changed, and state legislatures changed, and Congress changed, and yes, eventually the White House changed. Because they marched, America became more free and more fair, not just for African Americans, but for women and Latinos, Asians and Native Americans, for Catholics, Jews, and Muslims for gays, for Americans with disabilities. America changed for you and for me. And the entire world drew strength from that example. Whether the young people who watched from the other side of an iron curtain and would eventually tear down that wall, or the young people inside South Africa who would eventually end 
the scourge of apartheid. 